27. Create the way you relate. We can't create our truest selves without creating relationships in the process. Relationships are everywhere. Relationships are everything. There is no end to relationship, said the Indian spiritual leader Krishnamurti. There may be the end of a particular relationship, but relationship can never end. To be is to be related. I have trained many corporations with a four-part seminar series. The first three parts are on self-motivation, and the final part is on relationship building. Sometimes CEOs ask me upfront, ahead of the training, if I don't have that ratio out of balance, shouldn't you have more of it be on relationship building? They ask. After all, team building and customer relations are surely more important than self-motivation. I stand by my ratio. We can't relate to others if our relationship with ourselves is poor. A commitment to personal motivation comes first. Because who wants to have a relationship with someone who is not motivated in any way? When we do get to the fourth part, relationship building, the focus is on creativity. Creativity is the most neglected and yet most useful aspect of relationship building. In relationships most of us think with our emotions rather than our minds. But to think with our feelings instead of our minds puts us in the unresourceful state that Colin Wilson describes as being upside down. When we view relationships as opportunities for creativity, they always get better. When our relationships get better, we are even more motivated. My youngest daughter, Margie, was in fourth grade. When a very shy girl in her class accidentally put a large black mark on her own nose with an indelible marker, many of the kids in the class pointed at her and started to laugh. The little girl was finally reduced to tears of embarrassment. At some point Margie walked over to the girl to give her some comfort. Margie's astonished teacher related this story to me. Impulsively, Margie picked up the marker and marked her own nose, and then handed the marker to another classmate and said, I like my nose this way. What about you? In a few moments the entire class had black marks on their noses, and the shy girl who was once crying was laughing. At recess, Margie's class all went out on the playground with marked noses, and they were the envy of the school obviously into something unusual and cool. This story is interesting to me because of how Margie used her creativity and her mind, instead of her emotions to solve a problem. She elevated herself up into her mind, where something clever could be done. If she had used her feelings to think with, she might have expressed anger at the class for laughing at the girl, or sadness and depression. Anytime you take a relationship problem up into the mind, you have unlimited opportunities to get creative. Conversely, when you send a relationship problem down the elevator into the lower half of the heart, you risk staying stuck in the problem forever. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't feel anything. Feel everything. Notice your feelings. Just don't think with them. When there's a relationship problem to be solved, travel up your ladder to the most creative you. You'll soon realize that we create the relationships we have in our lives. They don't just happen. We are each of us angels with only one wing, said the Italian artist Luciano de Crescenzo, and we can only fly embracing each other.